April 17, 1620 was the day that changed everything. This was the day that Marguerite Bourgeois was born. The world didn't know it yet, but this baby, the sixth child of Guillaume Matt Vernier and Abraham Bourgeois, would one day make the dream of a new world a reality. Marguerite had a normal childhood with lots of brothers and sisters to keep her happy and busy. Her father was a candle maker and in an age without electricity. He always had customers, so the family always had enough money to get what they needed. Marguerite enjoyed having nice clothes and the freedom to visit her friend and have a thriving social life. But everything changed when she was 19 years old. That was the year that Marguerite's mother died. With six younger brothers and sisters, Marguerite stepped into the role of a mother and looked after the younger children. This was a pretty big responsibility for a girl her age, but she stepped up and handled it. She was there for all of her younger siblings. The next year, Marguerite had a life-changing experience while walking in the October procession in honor of Our Lady. She felt for just a brief few moments that the image of Our Lady was looking at her. And in those few moments, Marguerite felt her life being completely transformed. She felt that Our Lady had called her out of her old life of pleasure into a new life of service. Marguerite burned with the passion to serve God by helping the people in her hometown. She went home that day and cleared out her closet giving away all her fancy clothing and keeping the simplest and plainest things. She didn't need to look good, she needed to do good. She headed off to the convent and started volunteering as a teacher for the poor people in the town. In those days, to get an education, the girls had to be able to pay a room and a board to live at the convent. The nuns were cloistered which meant that they did all the work inside the convent and never came out into town. Margaret was free to go anywhere in the town where the girls needed education but didn't have the money to pay. She was there for all those girls. Marguerite wanted to dedicate her life to God by becoming a nun, but when she applied, she was told no. She could have given up right then, but she kept on working and praying that someday she would be able to serve God as a member of a religious community. And when the governor of New France came to the coven looking for teachers, he didn't want cloistered nuns because the colony wasn't big enough yet. So Marguerite was exactly right for the job, and she said yes. Marguerite's journey to New France had lots of dangers and challenges, but she finally got on board the ship and set off. It took around two months to cross the ocean in those days. And many of the passengers got sick. Marguerite stepped up and took care of them just as she had done with her brothers and sisters. She earned the nickname Mother Bourgeois because she cared for and comforted them. The name stuck with her for the rest of her life. She was there for those sick travelers. Marguerite was given an old stable to live in and run her school. It was cold and didn't smell very good, but she got it cleaned up and settled down to serve the community of settlers. When the King of France sent young orphaned women to marry the soldiers, Marguerite took them under her wing and taught them how to cook and clean and sew their own clothes. She was their friend and counselor, and even helped them find the soldier who would be a good life partner. Once their babies were born, she taught them how to look after their children. She was so trusted and respected that she was given the authority to sign marriage certificates, not something that many women were permitted to do. There was even a time when a young mother had tried to control her naughty child by putting him in a barrel so he wouldn't get into trouble. When she went to get him out, she was horrified to find that he had suffocated. She was arrested and would have been punished for murdering her child, but her family came and asked Marguerite for help. Marguerite was able to make the authorities see that this was a tragic accident and not a cruel murder. So the grieving mother was set free. Marguerite was there for this mother and the other early settlers. Marguerite lived to be 80 years old, an amazing age for those times. Then, in December of 1699, when the young sisters in the community became dangerously ill, Marguerite saw that this young sister had a lot to give, if only she'd get well. So she prayed to God that he would only heal the young sister and take her life instead. From the time she offered this prayer, the young sister began to heal, and Marguerite began to fail. 
Finally, on January 12, 1700, Marguerite's life ended. Marguerite was there for the young sister and her congregation. Marguerite lived and worked in the colony for almost 50 years. She crossed the ocean a total of seven times and brought back with her several young women to join her in her work. Her dream of serving God in a religious community came true when the Pope finally granted her the right to form the Congregation of Notre Dame of Montreal as an uncloistered religious order. The CND went on to found schools in Quebec and the Maritimes and finally arrived in Ontario to set up many elementary schools and several high schools, including her own. She never even met us, yet her whole life was dedicated to being here for all of us by making our lives better. Today we look around and see the faces of our friends and know that our world is so much better for having them in it. We see the generous donors who contributed to our Christmas baskets and know that the lives of our basket families are better because of them. We see the sisters of the congregation of Notre Dame who shaped our school and gave us our traditions and our spirit and we know that our lives are better because of what they did for us. Marguerite Bourgeois is the common thread that joins us all together. She was Notre Dame's ultimate example of being here for all of us. When we live by her example, we carry on her spirit of hospitality, gratitude, peace, charity, courage, love, forgiveness, justice, compassion, and faithfulness.